Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alguitars Academy Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4 in Dragonflight. Footage is from the PTR, so although unlikely, some changes are possible before this hits live servers. At the start of the dungeon, there's four different NPCs that you can talk to. Talking to one of them gives you 5% of one of your secondary stats, so make sure you do your research and don't forget to talk to them once the dungeon starts so you're not trolling and having 5% less stats from your teammates. If you go up and to the right, you're going to encounter some skitterflies which are going to charge people and do a bunch of damage to them. And it's very likely that you'll be pulling these on top of the vile lashers and the small lashers which are going to keep casting those big green swirlies on the ground. So you have to DPS them down, heal through all of this and tank it without getting hit, while the skitterflies at the same time are getting stacking increased damage buff. So expect a lot of chaos until you clear this area in order to summon the first boss. The Overgrow Ancient has a tank buster that he's going to follow shortly with the Germination skill. He's going to spawn brown swirlies at the feet of the player which you need to dodge but keep close to the boss possibly as they turn into hungry lashers that are asleep right now. You can start cleaving those but beware of the next ability which is called Branch Out. Another big swirly that you need to dodge that summons another at which is a bigger tree. This one is going to try to cast healing touch make sure to interrupt all of these and DPS it down quickly because right now everybody has a ticking dot on them and the only way to remove it is kill the ad and stay in the green circle that spawns once it dies. Once the boss reaches 100 energy he's going to cast burst forth. This does heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party and awakens all the hungry lashers that haven't been killed at this point. Obviously the tank needs to get aggro on all of them and every time they melee hit him they apply a stacking poison dot. So it's crucial to have a poison dispel in your party to get rid of the stacks once they become too high. Rinse, repeat, kill the boss and move on to the next. On one of the platforms you have to fight a mini boss that does a storm slash just a tank buster and then he's going to summon deadly winds. Make sure to move out from the swirly on the ground as quickly as possible as it's going to summon a tornado that's going to kill you. The mini boss also does a huge AoE circle that you can either line of sight behind one of the pillars or outrange if you are a caster. On the next platform you need to find a few packs of birds, make sure to dodge the gust which is a frontal and interrupt the call the flock of the alpha egos as it buffs all the mobs around it. After a few waves of birds, a circle and balls spawn on the platform, you need to get the balls into the circle and press your extra button in order to summon the boss. The boss arrives with a bunch of fire swirlies on the ground, make sure to dodge these so you don't die even before the fight started. And the boss is a big bird that leaves a nasty dot on your tank, so be prepared to heal through that. The boss's main ability is Deafening Screech, which does AoE damage to everybody in your party and leaves a stacking debuff which increases the damage from subsequent casts. As you can see, the boss also has a frontal, so make sure you keep an eye for that at all times. Shortly after, a fire and a wind circle are going to spawn on the platform along with the balls that we saw in the beginning of the fight. Bringing three balls into one of the circles and pressing the extra action button is going to get rid of your deafening screech stacks, but it's also going to remove the circle. So what you want to do is survive as many screeches as possible and once the damage becomes unbearable, you want to throw some of the balls into one of the circles, usually starting with the fire one. That briefly stuns the boss, it takes increased damage and then that fight continues with you having no deafening screech stacks but now fire swirlies are going to keep spawning around the platform so you have to dodge those as well. The boss of course is going to continue casting deafening screech which is going to keep stacking on you and once the damage becomes unbearable again you can throw the boss into the wind circle. This is going to clear your stacks yet again but now there's going to be winds that are going to be blowing you back and forth on the platform and tornadoes that you have to dodge on top of the fire swirlies. Among all of these scales you should be able to kill the boss before the deafening screech stacks become unbearable for a third time. The trash that follows has a bunch of different mobs, the spellbound scepter is going to cast mystic blast, you cannot interrupt that but you can cc or stun it so make sure you have something available otherwise the whole party is going to take a lot of AoE damage. Interrupt the mana voids and the surges from the mana fiends as not only they do damage but they can also drain your healer's mana. 
and the battle axes are going to put a bleed on your tank, so be prepared to heal through that as well. You also have to find the arcane ravagers which are going to try and ambush somebody jumping on top of them and doing a lot of damage but you can line of sight that skill and the only ability that they have left and you have to worry about is the frontal that follows after that. Few packs of mobs like this and you summon Veximus which is the next boss. He's going to spawn orbs that start crawling towards the boss and if they reach him he's going to do AoE damage and get more energy so you actually want to soak them. However, keep in mind that they leave a debuff on you which is stacking and increases the damage from subsequent soaks. This debuff is 20 seconds long and it is dispellable but you can also let your tank soak a little bit more than everybody else. The other major ability is mana bombs, three players drop puddles on the ground and take a bunch of damage. They also take ticking damage once they're marked with those mana bombs before they drop them so be prepared to top them up. Especially if there's an overlap with Arcane Fissure, which is an ability that the boss casts at 100 energy. It does another batch of heavy AoE damage and knocks everybody back, following up with a bunch of blue swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. The nastiest parts of the fight are if the mana bombs overlap with the Arcane Fissure, be ready to use defensives and healing cooldowns for those moments. The boss also has a frontal, so make sure you're standing behind it and keep doing all of these mechanics until you eventually kill it. In order to reach the last boss you have to go back to the area where you killed the overgrown ancient and you're going to find some echo knights there. They will start spinning around in a whirlwind that you need to avoid but you can also use the stairs to dodge it. The invokers are going to cast arcane missiles, interrupt those as they do a lot of damage and do not interrupt the astro bomb. This marks a player with a blue circle that explodes and although they're going to take damage they also damage the mobs nearby so try to drop it on top of the trash. And if possible save a stun or CC for the restorers who are going to cast shields on nearby mobs but this one is not interruptible. The last boss is Echo of Dora Gossa and she has a brand new ability Unleash Energy which does a bunch of AoE damage and summons two arcane rifts. The rifts are occasionally going to spit out orbs that you need to dodge so be aware of that and stay away from them if possible. The boss is going to follow up with energy bomb, it marks a player who shortly after explodes so move away from others and you also get an overwhelming power stack. This slightly increases the damage that you do but if at any point you reach 3 stacks you drop another arcane portal on the ground making even more orbs to dodge. The boss is also randomly going to apply stacks to players every now and then and if you get hit by any of the orbs that come out of the rifts you're also getting a stack. Long story short if you are at 2 stacks and you know you're getting a third one try to drop the portal near the walls. Other than that the boss occasionally sucks everybody in, run out of the blessed radius circle after that and keep in mind that Ichi has a frontal so you have to be ready to dodge that at any point. The fight will slowly become more chaotic as there are going to be more arcane portals on the ground summoning more orbs. So try to stack those rifts close to each other and move the boss to an open area whenever possible. And if you manage to dodge everything you kill the boss and you complete the dungeon. Check my channel for guides for the rest of the mythic plus dungeons in season 4. I'll see you guys there. Now get out of here.